Welcome back to Imp of Bee and I am in different surroundings today. I'm not in the bongo. The only reason for that is it is so warm and muggy out that it's just too uncomfortable. I start going redder and redder. So I decided to do this episode in the house. But we are of course still talking everything bongo. One of the first videos I did when I started this channel probably has had more views than all of my other videos put together. And that was the video called Five Mistakes I've Made Since Owning a Bongo. So it seems to me that there's a lot of people out there who maybe haven't even bought a bongo yet, who are sort of searching on YouTube for information from people who already do have a bongo. And I've had mine for six years. And I've also had a couple of questions from people asking sort of information on how I bought my bongo and the process it took and in fact why I decided on a bongo altogether. So today I'm going to talk about my bongo story. I think it was probably about seven or eight years ago Richard and I um, were at the local beach and we were in a car we were having a barbecue sort of on the beach um, and there was a big car park behind the beach and there was a lady in in a camper van and she was sort of she was on her own but she was it looked a lovely setup she was lying on a bed inside the camper van reading her book and every now and again she would come out and sort of look at the view and I think it was at that point that I decided I wanted a van because I wanted to be able to go to places to sort of sit, admire the views and get my bed out and have a nap if I want to, read a book, etc. So that was where the seed was first sown. I think prior to that point, I'd never re really considered having a camper van because I loved camping in tents. So pretty much from that day onwards, I set about researching. Richard and I, with all the kids then, went to one of the, the V-Dub festivals that year and it was Vanfest held in Malvern. And for those of you who have been to one of those shows, it, it was all things camper van, V-Dub in the main, but some beautiful specimens there. And I really love the old style ones, so I kind of thought that was where I was going to go. And I sort of almost died when I saw the prices of the vans there. But I came home and I started sort of seeing what was around and what was for sale. And there was one that seemed within my budget. And now my budget was £10,000. And this was sort of six years ago. I found um, it was a, a V-Dub camper van for sale in on Gumtree. And it, it looked reasonably good, um, really good sort of service history, etc. So I messaged the owner and I didn't hear back, but within maybe the next day, I had a message from Gumtree saying that the person whose advert I'd responded to was known to be a scammer. So be very careful. So that kind of put me off. And because I've always had, well, pretty much for the last 20 years anyway, I've always had company cars. I haven't really bought many cars at all. So that experience really put me off buying second hand. So then I started looking at dealers and I started looking at small motorhomes. But I knew I was going to be using this van on my own quite a lot and I'm not confident driving a motorhome. And also there was the issue of parking on the driveway. Motorhome was going to be too big. So that pretty much ruled those out. So it was probably another six months to a year and yeah, nothing, nothing was really happening. But then, I don't know quite how it happened, I found an article, I think it was written quite a long time ago and it was in um, one of the Sunday papers that one of the journalists had hired a camper van called a Mazda Bongo. And it was a, an old vehicle, but this journalist had had an absolute fantastic time. 
And I thought, I've never really heard of a Mazda Bongo. What, what is that? And that kind of got me looking into the Bongo. So if you're in the position where you were thinking about a Bongo as a camper van for yourself, as I said, I'm not a mechanic and I can't give mechanical advice, but the top advice I would give to anybody considering a bongo would be, well, watch that video of mine first, the five mistakes I made, but definitely do your research on the bongo. They are old vehicles now because, you know, the, the factory that makes them, or made them, I should say, burnt down in 2002. So they're all quite elderly vehicles. But if you can get one that's been well looked after, then, you know, for all the other reasons, they make fantastic vans. And I am really, really happy with the one that I got. So um, I'm not going to obviously talk too much about the mechanics because that's not my thing anyway. But when I was looking for a van, definitely bear in mind the age of the vehicles and also the fact that they were made for Japanese roads. You will run into problems with rust, which is a big problem for some vans if they haven't been correctly treated. So, yeah, elderly vehicles and rust, I would say, do your research on that and go and ask the forums. I mentioned it on the previous video I did on the five mistakes I've made since owning a bongo. And I can't stress enough, there is so much help and advice on Bongo Fury and the Mazda Bongo Owners Club Facebook pages. There is a wonderful community of people who've owned Bongo, some of them for a long, long time. And a, a lot of mechanics are on there as well. And there is a lot of advice. So if you are a little hesitant about buying a Bongo because you've heard some of the horror stories, I would say, Go and look at those pages. Go onto the Facebook page. You can do a little search with anything, you know, the common things that come have been asked a lot. So you can sort of scroll through and see the answers there. And again, Bonga Fury is a wealth of information. But moving on about my story, because a couple of you have asked. After I had sort of discovered the Bongo, I was I made my mind up pretty much that the Bongo was the right van for me. And um, I did reply uh, I did ask I found a few people selling their bongos online and they lived a long way away from me there was nobody sort of local so I couldn't actually go and see and I didn't want to drive hours on end to go and see a van that I was going to look at it and look at the cupboards really because I have no mechanical knowledge whatsoever and I did drive around I was fortunate I had a job where I pretty much covered the the south of the UK so I could go and round drive and explore and I did go and see a few dealers. So I got an idea of what to look for in a van. But in the end, the budget I had, I wanted to get the best possible bongo that I could get for my budget. So I ended up importing mine as a grey import, which was, you know, I thought that might be really complicated. It was very, very easy. And there are a number of dealers. Again, go onto those Facebook pages or Bongo Fury and find out which garages near you do it. Um, but essentially these garages import the vans, they are usually a very good grade and you can, well at least the one I imported, I saw it on the quayside in Japan, I had photographs underneath so I could see that there was no rust there. And then the dealer took care of it, I, I had an anxious wait for about eight weeks while it was in transit. Um, it was like waiting for a baby to be born, it really was, it was so exciting. Um, and then the bongo arrived in the UK, me and Richard went to see it. As I've described before, it was imported with the tin top. And yeah, we, we decided to have a pop top roof, which was another delay. We had to wait a little bit for that. But the dealer took care of registration in the UK. All the, the sort of mechanics and cam belt and all the boring mechanical stuff. So when I went to collect it, the van was as good as it could be and I was reasonably confident of that. I had a little bit of money left in my budget after I bought the van and had the roof done. I And that was the other, definitely something else I would recommend is because of the age of them, 
have a, an emergency fund if possible. Um, I, I kept a little bit back because they are, you know, all mechanical things go wrong eventually. And I think with the age of the vehicle, from my point of view, I like to get it serviced every year and keep a bit of money by. I also buy breakdown cover just to give myself peace of mind. I've just bought it this year and I bought it for Europe as well because I was sort of hoping that I might be going to Europe before the end of next year. Who knows now? But I bought breakdown cover and it was it was less than £100 anyway. Um, and that's for Europe and um, and the UK. So, you know, it's it's not worth not doing it if you can, just for peace of mind. I think taking aside the mechanics, if you can get a bongo that's been looked after, or if you're going to buy one that's a fixer-upper and you've got the budget to do it, then I would say, from my point of view anyway, there's three positives that made me choose a bongo. One was the price. For all the extras and the finish you get with a bongo, I thought it was good value compared to some other vans, but I'm not saying the bongo is better than any others. It was just, it fitted what I was looking for. So when I say extras, I'm talking the fact that it's an automatic, um, that my the blinds on the windows at the back, you know, they're, they're electric, so you flick a button and they go up and down. That to me was just a wow on such a, an aged vehicle really the the inside feels quite luxurious when I had all the seats you know they, they it was immaculate when I got it and the Draylon it, they just feel quite warm and cozy inside and just all the quirky things like when you switch the engine on you get the little Japanese greeting and yeah just so many things I think the van's got personality really the second is if you want to sort of be part of a community, then initially I thought, oh, I'm going to miss out now. If I don't have a V-dub, I'm going to miss out on all the scene and go into rallies and everything. And admittedly, you know, if, if that is a big part of what you want, then you're going to get a lot more of that with, with the V-dub community. But I think the Mazda Bongo community might be smaller scale, but if you like the, the meetup, the rallies, there is a lot of that going on. And, you know, if you join those groups, you will find out about it. There will be local people that do local meetups. You can do national meetups. And there is people, they make merchandise on it. And, you know, maybe not on such a large scale. But for me, I, I have found the community really lovely. And it's a big part of, of the, the bongo. Owning one is when you see another one on the road and you give a wave. It's a lovely feeling. And if you park somewhere, happened to me a couple of weeks ago, and somebody else pulls into the car park and they're driving a bongo, they almost invariably um, will say hello and hi and check each other's uh, fixtures and fittings. <laughs> but that's quite nice. Um, and the third thing is, as you can tell from my channel, the bongo and camper van life has become my, my hobby now. I absolutely love it. And I think it's especially since lockdown. Um, I have really, really seen the benefits of having the van. So, yeah, my final roundup would be don't, definitely don't go and buy a van without checking it and without getting all the correct advice. But don't necessarily be put off having a bongo because they're old or from what somebody's scare stories. Do your research. Find a garage near you that can give advice, go and see, take somebody with you, maybe from the bongo community who, who know bongos and they, they can give you some really good advice. If you've got anything, I say it every week, but if you want me to cover anything on future videos about the bongo, um, then you've only just got to put a comment or message me and I will see what I can do about that. But yeah, um, good luck with your search if you are out there thinking about having a bongo. And for those of you who already have bongos, I hope you're all out enjoying them and having fun in them and hopefully no mechanical issues. And I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.